Hello and welcome to the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week in the Explain series, we'll be looking at cytomegalovirus or CMV. Now, CMV can cause quite a wide ranging uh, types of pathology. So uh, this week, we'll only be concentrating on retinitis. And that's what I hope to explain. So what is CMV or cytomegalovirus? Well, like all herpes virus, uh, CMV is extremely uh, common. Now, around about 6% of the population will have uh, CMV uh, at any one time, and like all herpes viruses, be it chickenpox or herpes, uh, cytomegalovirus is lifelong once you've got it. But it's completely harmless if you've got a good uh, immune system. Now, back in the early 1990s, uh, there was no antiretroviral therapy for people who had HIV. And so uh, nearly half of all HIV infected patients who eventually went on to develop uh, AIDS, which is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, uh, would also develop some form of CMV and organ disease. And about that 50% uh, that developed some form of CMV disease usually also died because of their CMV disease. Now, the pathologies related to CMV it would be retinitis, uh, esophagitis, colitis, pneumonia, and central nervous system. But in this episode, we're going to be concentrating on the retinitis. Uh, with the advent of a highly active antiretroviral therapy, or sometimes known as continuous antiretroviral therapy, the same disease is much, much less common, and around about 5% of the levels of those uh, seen in the early 1990s. Now, in terms of CM, uh, in terms of the epidemiology, uh, now the risk of exposure increases with age and also increases with sexual exposure as well. So in the United States and in most countries in Europe, general adult population, the rate of infection is around about 60%. Now it increases if you're uh, an IV uh, drug user and if you're HIV positive uh, MSN, that's men who are sex with men, it can be over 90%. Now, if you've got CMV or if you don't have, sorry, if you, regardless of whether you have HIV or not, um, the vast majority of people are asymptomatic and don't have any symptoms, but will still secrete CMV in their saliva, respiratory uh, secretions, urine, and semen. And so it can quite easily be passed uh, through sex and even uh, kissing, but there's nothing to be worried about. Um, now, once you've got CMV, it is uh, lifelong, but if you're immunocompetent, uh, unfortunately, then it can cause a bit of trouble. Uh, now, in terms of immuno, uh, being immunocompromised, what does that mean? Well, um, as this series is usually around about sexual health, uh, so HIV positive individuals that are not taking highly active antiretroviral therapy will eventually become immunocompromised. But also this also applies to people who are on long term steroids or transplant patients or, or individuals who have a, another immunosuppressive disorder. Um, old age, uh, and I mean the extremes of old age, can also um, uh, be a form of immunosuppression uh, as well as the immune system gets uh, tired uh, with age. Now, in terms of the pathogenesis of CNV, well, uh, as um, with HIV, if you don't take any medication to control the HIV, you gradually lose your immune function and you lose something called cell-mediated immunity. And this is quite important because that allows um, your body to control infections like CMV. And when your CD4 count, that's the uh, white blood cells that control a lot of uh, infections, uh, drops below uh, 100, uh, then unfortunately uh, CMV will come out uh, and can harm in this instance, uh, the eyes. You also get what's called cell-to-cell -cell transmission with CMV, and this can cause quite widespread inflammation and eventually necrosis. And that's quite common in, uh, to see in the, uh, the retina as well as uh, the colon as well, forming uh, CMV colitis. And you also may get, um, even if you have, uh, you're completely asymptomatic, you may get episodes of CMV viremia, which uh, may not actually cause any illness, but can disseminate the CMV into other organs, uh, thereby setting up an organ disease uh, once the CD4 count drops below a certain level. Now, um, before the availability of highly active antiretroviral therapy, um, up to 90% of patients with AIDS in the United States had actually evidence of some form of disseminated CMV infection uh, at post-mortem. Um, now, it's important to realise that 
highly active antiretroviral therapy does uh, allow your immune system to return to effectively uh, normal. And once it's above uh, CD4 counts above 400, sorry, above 100, uh, you're unlikely um, to get uh, much problems uh, with CMV. Uh, however, uh, it should be recognised that uh, just because you reach 100 and your CD4 count uh, still means you uh, still need to be above that level for a period of time for your uh, cell-mediated immunity to actually uh, take effect. And you usually have to be have a CD4 count above 100 for at least three months before you come off of CMV treatment, if, that were, if that's what you was on originally. Now, um, because of highly active antiretroviral therapy, we hardly see CMV-related disease. Uh, I've been a HIV doctor for uh, quite a number of years now, and I've only seen it a couple of times. Um, so what usually happens is uh, people suffer from CMV pathologies uh, when they are very late at presenting, and they're actually presenting with an AIDS diagnosis with a CD4 count of way below 50. Um, uh, or they, for some reason, are unable to tolerate that antiretroviral therapy, or they just don't take that antiretroviral therapy. Uh, but it is quite a, a rare disease compared to what it was in the 1990s. So in terms of the actual pathology, um, uh, CMV infection results in a large number of cells with intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. What that means is the cells uh, increase uh, to two to four times their normal size and they have a displaced nucleus, so they look like an, an owl. And you can see the um, funny looking cell uh, in the middle of the picture, uh, which looks like it's two owl eyes. The small speckly uh, pattern above those eyes are the uh, intracytoplasmic uh, inclusion bodies. In terms of how do you diagnose uh, retinitis, it's usually a clinical examination evaluation. Uh, however, uh, if you suspect CMV, uh, it should be, uh, you should do a, a CMV DNA viral load. And if there's a possibility of getting a tissue biopsy, especially if it's, for example, CMV colitis, then histological evidence uh, is uh, very important. However, a tissue sample positive in CMV inclusion bodies may only reflect infection while the end organ disease, and that's why uh, the clinical examination and evaluation are also uh, quite important, um, as is the CMV DNA viral load. A low viral load only in the thousands is probably not that significant. If it's in the millions with associated signs and symptoms, that probably carries a lot more weight. In terms of CMV retinitis presentation, again, you probably only see this with CD4, CD4 counts below 50, and it only may affect one eye at first, um, and, but usually it is bilateral uh, over time. Uh, the patient uh, might talk about uh, presenting with uh, floaters, that's the little specks you get in front of your eye when you look in a blue sky, um, and uh, you may end up getting uh, larger blind spots, blurred vision, or a sudden decrease in visual acuity. However, it's important to know that 50% of patients with CMV uh, retinitis uh, are uh, asymptomatic. And so that's why it's very important that if your CD4 count is low, uh, you should have some form of fundoscopy uh, um, uh, performed. Now, what does CMV retinitis look like? Well, this is a normal eye. And as you can see, the, uh, the optic nerve with the optic disc, where all the arteries and veins are coming up and are branching around, going to the top and to the bottom of the retina. And the area marked for there is where the uh, central point of visual acuity is. That's the best part of the retina for good vision. So if that bit gets wiped out by CMV disease, and that's called zone one, uh, then uh, you will be uh, blind, unfortunately. So um, here we have uh, retina with uh, quite extensive zone one uh, disease, and this person will have a severe disruption to his visual uh, acuity. Um, here is another example, again, wiping out that zone one area. Um, this is around the optic disc, and this picture, um, not the Favia is uh, affected, but not as bad as some of the others, but the uh, upper part of the uh, retina uh, has severely been uh, affected. So in terms of, uh, as I said, it's a clinical diagnosis. 
uh, you need to file off a form for endoscopy. You would also do uh, virological confirmation, uh, let's face it. Um, it's not necessarily required, it's a clinical diagnosis, but you will do it anyway. And you also need to have quite good uh, links with your local ophthalmology service as well, and um, because of uh, joint treatment uh, needs to be instigated. Um, in terms of treatment itself. Obviously, the patient should be started on highly active antiretroviral therapy fairly quickly. And uh, the treatment depends on progression. Is it an old lesion? Is it a new lesion? Uh, and, uh, and very much uh, depends on the history of the actual patient. Uh, but as a general rule, um, if you start um, systemic treatment uh, early, if it's only affecting one eye, then it will also protect uh, the other eye. Uh, and the treatment usually consists of an induction period between two to four weeks, followed by a maintenance uh, period. The maintenance period being depending how long it takes for the patient to get his CD4 count uh, or her CD4 count uh, of 100. And so the standard treatment is all van gan 900 milligrams BD, or it could be IV van gan 5 milligrams per kilogram BD, or Foscarnet 90 milligrams per kilogram um, BD. Uh, all intravenous doses obviously need to be uh, to just, uh, adjusted for renal impairment. In terms of, um, you can use additional uh, implants or intravitreal injections, and that's especially re recommended in CMV retinitis affecting, affecting uh, zone one, uh, and also um, induction and maintenance with a GAN cyclovir implant can also be considered where systemic therapy is contraindicated, for example, uh, in pregnancy or in severe renal disease. <coughs> Um, it's important to know that if you do get an implant um, uh, in the eye, with a, sorry, a gansite implant, it will last for approximately 220 days. That was in the pre-heart era. It's good to know that. Um, so that way uh, you, you have a bit of a breathing space to start antiretroviral therapy and get that C4 count up. In terms of the maintenance, same medications, but half dose. And that's effectively all I'm going to say. And if you've got a good immune system above 100 and ideally for three months, then that is, um, you can actually stop at the maintenance therapy. Um, in terms of uh, drug resistance, well, the only reason why you get drug resistance is if you get a, a UR95 uh, a CMV gene mutation. Uh, what that mutation does is it stops uh, converting Gansan cyclovir monophosphate to triphosphate <coughs> and uh, stops. And so then the CMV is allowed to uh, continue replicating. Uh, and if this happens, then you go to uh, other forms of drugs. For example, uh, Foscarnet uh, is, a, is a good medication uh, to use, but again, can have nasty side effects. Uh, in terms of other treatment options, obviously a dose increase, uh, intervitreal Foscarnet or um, implants uh, can also be used. There's a bit more uh, information there which you can read through in your own time. In terms of uh, other drug resistance, uh, resistant cultures will happen uh, over a period of 9 to 24 months, near enough, um, but with high, uh, highly active, and highly active antiretroviral therapy, uh, this has dropped down to 9%. Um, and, and so the, the important thing to get to understand here for CMV retinitis, the, tr the main steroid treatment, yes, you can use van gan cyclovir, but it is uh, actually highly active antiretroviral therapy as uh, used. In terms of pregnancy and breastfeedings, um, sidonavir in females and males shouldn't be used um, because it is very tetragenic and a uh, pretty nasty drug. Uh, and ideally, you should use an implant if you can and avoid using it. But if you need systemic therapy, van gan cyclovir, which is a pro drug to gan cyclovir, uh, can be used. Okay. Uh, routine prophylaxis is not used in the UK as people would tend to use highly active antiretroviral therapy. In terms of the prognosis, it tends to be good, but you can end up with something called immune recovery urovitis, uh, which is a horrible infl inflammatory reaction that tends to recover as your CD4 count uh, improves. Okay, so that is the main areas of consideration. Obviously, joint care between the HIV physician and the ophthalmologist. These are some of the sites. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have good sexual health. Please like, uh, subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care and uh, good luck.